Hello, this is Dr. Ames, and I'm talking to you about how to create a geoprocessing service and post it on ArcGIS server. This is for our BYU 514 class. And so uh, hopefully this will help you guys. You've got some geoprocessing servers you need, uh, services you need to create and post. I will show you in class, but I'm creating the video so that you can look at it in your own time, pause it, and come back to it. So the first step is to uh, find this nice PDF file that Esri has made that walks you through this process. And so I'll put the link online. You can also Google it, ArcGIS Server Publishing Geoprocessing Service. And you'll find a document here called Publishing Geoprocessing Services Tutorial by ArcGIS. And it looks something like this. And I'm going to base this uh, video somewhat on the material inside this guide here. Uh, we'll do something that you're familiar with, something I used in the 414 class, which is finding cities that are within 10 miles of a river. Uh, but pull up in this document, have it open, and follow along as you watch this video and as you're posting your own geoprocessing service. So I'm going to move this over to my other screen. And you'll see that the very first step is to create a folder where you want to do this work. And so I'm going to create a folder on my computer on the C drive under my data folder and I'm going to create a folder called scratch and that's what they tell you to do in the in the uh, video so we'll go to new or in the tutorial folder scratch and then the next step is to go find the shape files that you're going to use in your project and put them into that scratch folder so the shape files I'll use are in this USA scratch I've got a a cities shape file remember to grab all the pieces of it and I've got a river shape file. Make sure you grab all the pieces of it. Most importantly, you should remember, actually we just grab the SHP, the SHX, and the DBF. That's the shape file. And then the and then the uh, PRJ. There they all are. And I'll grab the cities, DBF, SHP, SHX, and PRJ. I'm going to copy them and put them into my nice data scratch folder here. There we go. And then in the tutorial they tell you not to have your data buried deep in a folder that has a lot of spaces in it. So data scratch is kind of a nice place to put it. The next step they have you do in the tutorial, and we'll use for our example here, is to open ArcMap and start a new blank project. Remember to not use a geodatabase, default geodatabase that's on the network server. So I'm using this one that's at my C data default. <clears throat> so I've got a new blank uh, project started. And then we'll go to geoprocessing, go to um, environments. And this is very important. We have to set the workspace environment for this project to be your newly created scratch folder. And so for me, it's at C data scratch current workspace and the scratch uh, workspace and we can save that next we can go to the geoprocessing geoprocessing options link and choose uh, background processing uncheck enable by default this is enabled you have to uncheck it because um, I don't know for some reason they want us to do that Now we're going to save the project that we've just started, and we need to save it with an appropriate name in the folder that we created. Save as, and <clears throat> excuse me, I've got my data scratch folder here, and I'm going to call it find a cities by rivers mxd save. Now, if you go to the upper right area of your catalog, you'll see Home Data Scratch. This is the home folder for the current project, since that's where we saved the MXD file. We can right-click and do... Actually, we can expand it, and we should see our data in there. The MXD project file, the city's shape file, and the river shape file. Right-click, New. We'll do a toolbox here. And let's give the toolbox... You can call it what you want. I'm going to call mine aims.tbx. This toolbox has nothing in it, but let's right-click new model. Now this is the geoprocessing model that you're going to post on your ArcGIS server. Before you do your big complicated one you're doing for your final project, 
I recommend you try a simple one to start with. So for our simple model, what we'll do is the finding cities near rivers model. So you remember that will uh, require a couple of inputs and it will require a, um, a couple of tools. So let's add the layers that we're going to be using into the map. So we have the cities, pull it into the map. We'll add the rivers layer and put it in the map. And you can see what that is. That's a bunch of major cities in the U.S. and large rivers. And let's grab a tool so we can go to geoprocessing, search for tools, find the, uh, find the buffer analysis. And make sure you get the buffer analysis, not the buffer coverage. And then let's also get the intersect tool. So we can go back to search, find intersect analysis. Bring it in. Uh, <clears throat> at this point, we need to also reference our input data. So let's go to the buffer tool, right click, open, or just double click it. And we'll specify the input features. First, what we'll do is we'll get the cities, or excuse me, the rivers. And we're going to output them. This is very important. Notice we can't use the default output location. Instead, we need to specify. Uh, scratch workspace for the output location because when this is running on the server it won't know about c colon backslash will it but it will know about something called scratch workspace percent uppercase scratch work space make sure you don't misspell it percent slash and we can just call this buffer this is going to be the buffered rivers Now we need to specify the distance. This will be the default distance. So when we actually run this as a tool in ArcMap server, we'll specify a distance. But let's go ahead and put in a default right now of 10 kilometers. So we'll switch to kilometers. And let's also dissolve the features together. So what will happen there, of course, is if you, as you make, the, we imagine the rivers, and then we're going to have these like polygons around them. We don't want a bunch of little polygons. We just want one big one around the rivers uh, where there are a bunch of rivers together. So that looks good. Click OK. Next, we want to run the intersect tool. So double click it oh, and like that. And we need to bring in this newly created buffer that will be coming out of the first function. And we also need to bring in the cities. And the output again, make sure you change this to percent. And it's going to be scratch workspace. This is basically a variable that uh, ArcGIS server will look for. And when it finds it, it knows to, to um, use whatever the scratch workspace is on that server. And the end of this is just going to be a result shape file, so we can call it result. This will be cities that are within the 10 kilometer distance of those rivers. And let's click OK. I think that's all we need to change here. OK, so our model is basically set up now. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, set some parameters. So these will be the variables that um, you can actually specify when you're running your service. I just want to load this rivers and this cities up onto the server, and I don't want to let the user be able to change them, so I'm not going to make them parameters. Instead, what I'll do is make the buffer distance. So go right-click, make variable, from parameter, distance. So this distance is going to be, parameter will be the, the uh, one that the users can set. Right-click, um, open actually, and okay, there's the default 10, so that's good. Uh, rename. Let's just rename it to distance, and I guess it could be uppercase. Uh, distance, and then right-click model parameter. Very important. It has the little p. We should be saving this as we go. Now the output of this thing is going to be a result shape file, a point showing where the cities are near rivers, but there's also going to be another result, which is the buffered of the uh, the buffered rivers themselves. I'd like to look at both of them in the output. So make that a parameter 
and make that one a parameter. Before we go any further, why don't we save this model and run it and make sure that it works and gives us the results we're expecting. So the model just finished. Let's do add to display on both of these so we can see what they look like. And there they are. So we have these poly, uh, polygons around the rivers, and then you can see the cities that were within that buffer are in this result file. And there are those dots in there. So we know this is working as expected. So the next step is to publish this model. Now the cool thing is, is we just um, we ran it. We actually need to run it again in order to publish it. The way we're going to run it is we'll close it, save it, go back to your catalog. You'll see your model there. In order to get the uh, output, in order to get the output to overwrite the previous layers, we need to go to geoprocessing, geoprocessing options, and turn on this button here, overwrite the outputs of geoprocessing operators. Okay, one more thing we need to do with this model is give it a better name than model. So let's click on the model uh, name and then go to model properties and give it a better name. I'm going to call it find cities by rivers, find cities by rivers. Okay, so that's a little bit better name for it. Save it, close it, and ignore that. Let's right click on it again, and uh, actually let's just run it. Just double click it to run it. And use the defaults, click OK. So we'll let this run. So what's happening is it's running the model. It's going to put the results into that scratch folder. And then we'll be able to find the results of it here in the current session. If you don't have this results window open, you need to go to Geoprocessing Results to turn that on. Then you can see the results of the current session. Let's find the, the function that just ran, which is our model. Right click it and do Share as Geoprocessing Service. Take the first option, Publish as a Service. Uh, this is the server we're going to publish it on. I won't give the login name and password right now because this video might make it out into the wild. But you all in the class know the username and password to log on to that server and you should have already connected to it as a Geo, a G, ArcGIS server in your catalog. Next. Use the existing folder. Please put it in the folder named after yourself. Continue. And at this point it's trying to figure out how to put that thing into that folder and it's going to give me a couple more options where we could specify the name and so forth. So it's going to be called Find Cities by Rivers and this all looks really good. You can turn on, uh, you could turn on Web Processing Service if you want to use this outside of the ArcGIS ecosystem. We'll leave it in there right now or we'll leave WPS off. I'm going to run this in synchronous mode. You run it, it finishes and then you get the result back from the web service. And we're, I think that's everything we have to check. Oh, we have to add some, um, see it says required description information on each of our parameters. So click down here, distance. We've got to put in a distance description. This is the distance to rivers. And buffer, this is with the output, the buffered uh, rivers. And then the result shape, uh, this is the cities. By rivers. And with that, I think we're good. Last thing we have to do is click Analyze. It'll check to see if there are any errors in our work. It'll tell us right here. For example, if you hadn't filled in those text boxes. Finally, press Publish. And click OK. It'll upload your data sets. And it'll upload the model and the folder and prepare it all for you up on the server. So I'm going to stop this video and we'll let this finish. And then I'll show us a, a second video that shows you how to write the JavaScript code to actually run this server service. Okay, hey, it looks like this just published successfully. I'm going to click OK on it. And I'm going to show you something cool now. If we start a new project, new map, and save the old one, and then look down here, expand open our ArcGIS server, expand where I place that thing under Dan Ames, Look at that, Find Cities by Rivers. You can see I've tried this in the past. This is the new one we just barely ran. Um, we can actually run this tool from the server now. Click it, run it, click OK. And this thing will run up on the server and it'll bring that back the results and put it in my map. Okay, that's pretty awesome, right? The data wasn't even on my map. Okay, on to the next video.